Okay, why pray in Latin? So I get asked this question quite a lot by my students because I do promote it and I do say we should try to and certainly when I go up to the chapel I, I do my prayers in Latin but I want to give you a short acronym so that you can remember why I pray in Latin and why others should also and then you can share this acronym with other people. So the acronym is COSTS, okay? So it's like it costs to pray, pray in Latin. Um, so firstly, the C for the, in the word costs, the C is about our identity as Catholic Christians. Yeah, We're Roman Catholics and every single one of us might have our own individual languages, our home languages. We've also got our own individual identities, but our predominant identity is that of baptized and many of you initiated Catholic Christians. So this means we're not part of some normal society. We're members of the body of Christ. The Catholic Church is a dignified and unified church. It's a place without division. It's a place with dignity and majesty in our church. So Latin is our universal language as Catholic Christians. Okay, so that's the C in costs. The O is about obedience. So throughout the years, the church's magisterium, the teaching authority of the church, if you like, and the teachings of our popes, even until recent years, have affirmed and reaffirmed and told us time and time again that Latin is a treasure. It should be treasured. It should be retained. It shouldn't be done away with. So it'd be bizarre if we have Catholics who fill our pews and no one can identify basic Latin. Or the only Latin they know is Gloria in Excelsis Deo. So we should be obedient. We should never forget the serious teachings of our church. And that means learning and understanding Latin to the best of our abilities. Okay, so we've got C, it's about our Catholic identity. O, it's about obedience to the magisterium of the church. Okay, the S. The S is sanctity. Latin's the language which has been used by many of the holy saints of the church. In fact, the majority of them probably prayed in Latin. That's significant. Because we're not left without an example as Catholics. So it's an act of humility to say, I want to pray like you, St. Francis, or St. Thomas Beckett, St. Margaret Clivero, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Thomas Aquinas, and, and many, many more. So this is a sacred language. It's about sanctity. It's set apart. Okay. It distinguishes between regular language that we use down at the chip shop from the solemn language we use in prayer and in liturgy. So when you hear prayers, when you hear chants in Latin, you know it's a holy thing. In fact, I'll, I'll play some for you now. And there you go. So you, you've listened to that and you can tell um, that actually it's about uniting ourselves to the heavenly court. It's not just the regular language we use. OK, so we got the C for our Catholic identity. We've got the O for obedience to the magisterium. We've got S for sanctity. It's a sacred, solemn language. Um, I'm now going to give you the T, which is timeless. It's timeless. It's stable and it's unchanging. For many of you, your grandparents would have prayed in Latin if they were Catholics and went to Mass. 
Um, mass was always in Latin until about 60 years ago when the mass changed quite a lot. Um, and everyone would have prayed in Latin at mass. So if we imagine heaven as a large population of saints, the vast majority would be familiar with and praying in Latin as they did on earth during the mass and during the rosary and our other devotional prayers as well. So we pray in communion with the saints in heaven. So it would be a delight for them to hear our prayers. This actually means that the prayers are more efficacious, they're more effective, they're more powerful because they're intergenerational, they're timeless, okay? So the Latin language is something that we don't use in common speech nowadays. It can't really be changed too much because of that. It can't be messed around with. Um, in fact, you probably recall that a few years ago, if you went to mass and you said the words, you heard the words, peace be with you, you would respond saying, and also with you. Nowadays, you'd say, and with your spirit. That's because the translation was not that good. So if we have a language that is timeless, that can't be altered too much, it's easier than just having prayers in our own languages, and then there could be some, some things which are lost in translation. So it's timeless as well, it's stable, it's unchanging. Okay, we come to the last S, and this for me is probably one of the, uh, the most significant and important aspects of this. The last S is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. The Bible, the church, the saints, and many more sources tell us that we're locked in a spiritual struggle against sin and the devil. Let's not be ashamed to admit that. And then we can enter the fray properly armed. When we pray in Latin, it's because it's passionately Catholic, it's obedient, it's humble, it's because it's sacred, it's timeless, but it's also because of the spiritual warfare and the fact that the demonic and those evil powers fear the language of Latin. Many, many holy people testify to this, many saints also. In our church, we have many spiritual graces that we're given, gifts that we're given by the church so that we can be properly equipped. So let's not ignore this one. Let's not let go of our treasures. As Catholics, we firmly believe that we're equipped to do battle with principalities. Our struggle is not just against flesh and blood, it's principalities and powers that's taken from the Bible. So we have these treasures, not, let's not do away with Latin, because how long before we do away with our other treasures, like the rosary, we say that's unnecessary, or reading sacred scripture, the Bible's not necessary anymore, or praying the Angelus, or receiving communion reverently, or in fact receiving the sacraments altogether. So this is spiritual warfare, let's not let go of our treasures, and let's ensure that the efficacy of our prayers are completely on point. Let's make that effort and please God and please our, our Blessed Mother also. So if you can get four more lessons in Latin, good, go for it. Um, I envy you if you manage to do that. If not, then some videos are going to be coming up because I would like every pupil at All Saints to be able to engage with the prayers of our church as part of your formation as young saints. We'll come together as one in Christ, a community in unison. Don't shirk away from this. I'm from Dagenham by way of Sudan. My mother tongue was Arabic and my second language was Cockney, but I made an effort to learn the basic prayers and then build up from there. I've even recorded my two-year-old praying the Ave Maria in Latin, so you can do it too. So let's make ourselves humble like children and say, we want to be part of the generation that restores the dignity and the honor and the reverence in our church. So let's do what a very holy cardinal once said. He said, if you want to lift up the church, let's get down on our knees. And while we're there, all saints, let's learn Latin and let's pray the powerful prayers of our church. Ave Maria.